not a hole for going to my ex's wedding pregnant. I, 32 female, have a daughter, 7 female with my ex, 33 male. Last weekend, he remarried to his new partner. Our split wasn't a good one as he cheated on me and admitted it literally one week before we were supposed to get married five years ago, leading me to losing almost 15,000 in deposits. As a result, we don't talk very much. He doesn't have any custody of our daughter as she is autistic and has problems with large groups of people, loud noises and bright lights, and he has put her in situations before where she has had breakdowns. He has supervised visitation. We normally have an arrangement with a wonderful nanny who goes with our daughter to his family events, so I don't have to go. We split the cost for this 50-50. Unfortunately, the nanny broke her ankle four days before the wedding and was unable to go. The only suitably experienced replacement we could find was double the price due to short notice, and my ex refused to pay half, instead insisting I go or I pay the difference. I refuse to pay the difference because I'm not currently working. Just started maternity leave at 8 months pregnant, so I was forced to go or risk traumatizing our daughter. My ex did not know I was this far advanced in my pregnancy. He knew I was pregnant. At the wedding, multiple family members of his and mutual friends of ours came up to ask me about the baby and who I was with, my now husband of two years. I brushed them off as much as possible, largely because I wanted to focus on our daughter's comfort but also because I didn't want to be accused of scene-stealing. Unfortunately, this has happened anyway. My ex called me up on Monday to blow up about how I ruined his wedding deliberately as payback for him ruining ours. I denied this and pointed out that it all could have been avoided had he paid the extra for the nanny. But he hang up on me and is now putting me on blast all over social media. Was I the a-hole for going? Now for the top comments. I suspect that your ex wanted you to come to the wedding so you'd have to see him enjoying the wedding day he robbed you off so many years ago. Instead, your pregnancy generated a lot of sympathy from his friends and family. He sounds vile. My sympathies for his new wife. Not a hole. Seriously, I hope he sounds way better off not marrying that a hole. You're a damn evil genius is what you are. Five years ago, the planning began. After he destroyed your wedding, you knew one day you would have your revenge. You carefully chose and ensnared the perfect replacement husband, chosen specifically for his fertility. Then spending the intervening years carefully monitoring ovulation, you conceived at exactly the right moment to be far enough along at his wedding to steal the spotlight. But not so far along that you risk going into labor. Once phase one of your plan was complete, all that was left is to break your nanny's ankle. From there, Everything fell neatly into place. Seriously, not today, Hull. X is a doorknob. It is big mad because he didn't think things through. Not your fault. Congrats on your revenge happily ever after. Been a long time since I've seen such a well-crafted evil plan. He told you to pay full price or attend. He chose to attend. He doesn't get to be pissy that you attended. Not today, Hull. If he's assuming this about him ruining the original wedding, then he's admitting he's a nahal. He's right on that. Not a nahal. And if having this child's mother appear visibly pregnant at his wedding ruined it, then it was probably a pretty horrible wedding to begin with. No, the person who ruined the wedding was your ex with his weird attitude. Why was he even looking at you? He could have just, you know, looked at his bride instead. What does he even think a wedding is? Sounds like there might be more than one reason he doesn't have custody. Completely self-centered people don't make good parents. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for not giving my fiancé the family ring as an engagement ring? I, 27 male, have a sad and hurt fiancé, 29 female, over a hypothetical situation and need an outside perspective. Backstory. My great-grandmother was the product of an affair between her mother and her boss. Because he was already married and my great-grandmother was biracial, she was never acknowledged. It wasn't until her father was on his deathbed, his wife had already passed before him, that he gave her his mother's ring and finally gave her the recognition she always craved. She loved that ring, and since then, it's been a prized possession in the family. My aunt was the only girl in the family after my grandmother died and doesn't have any children of her own. She told me that she would like to continue the tradition of passing this ring along to the next female generation and said that she would hang on to it until I decided to give it to someone really special in my life. 
I didn't explicitly mean to give it to my future wife, but my aunt let me know that it was an option. Fast forward to now, and I proposed to my live-in girlfriend of three years. In the past, I had considered giving her the ring, but decided against because while I love her, she is a bit of an irresponsible airhead. It's not malicious or blatant lack of care, but she does have a habit of losing, damaging, or misplacing things. I'd much rather give the ring to a future, responsible daughter instead, and just ended up proposing with a $4,000 ring. My girlfriend loved the ring and was so proud of finding a guy who knew what she liked. Since we were in the early stages, my girlfriend was still in the habit of showing it off. And fortunately, she lost it. And when I say lost, I mean she accidentally dropped it down the elevator shaft when she was showing it off to a co-worker. My girlfriend was distraught and was almost too ashamed to tell. I told her that while I was upset, that I didn't hate her and would get her a replacement. She was so grateful and didn't care that the replacement ring was a lot cheaper and was happily showing this one off as much as the other one. My fiancé made a big post, and then all hell broke loose when a cousin of mine, paternal side, asked why I didn't just give her the maternal side family ring, since it had such great sentimental value. Now, my fiancé knew about the ring, but assumed that my aunt would take it with her to the grave. She didn't know that giving it to her was an option and ask about it. I tried to say that I would rather give it to our future daughter, but she countered that by giving it to her. It didn't mean that our future daughter wouldn't get it later. After enough pushing, I finally admitted my concerns about potentially losing the ring. My fiancé was very hurt by this, and while she hasn't said anything directly, she's sulking, and I've even heard her cry about it. Her sister's calling me jackass for refusing to give my fiancé the ring, and says that she just make mistakes. Am I the a-hole? Edited to add, yes, we did contact management about getting the ring from the bottom of the elevator shaft, but it couldn't be located. My fiancé stated that it was dropped when the doors were opening slash closing and her co-workers backed up her story. Yes, the ring was properly sized at the time she showed it off to a co-worker. However, she took it off to show the inscription inside. Yes, the ring was insured and we used that money to get her a new one. Dude. She did exactly what you thought she would, except it could have been the family ring down the elevator shaft. Not they, Hull. Exactly. It's like, babe, I'm sorry, but you kinda did prove my point. But then I would expect that not to go down well. Not they, Hull. It would go down about as well as a $4,000 engagement ring down an elevator shaft, frankly. Not they, Hull. I would say you were the a Hull, but she literally lost her engagement ring. But even if she didn't tend to lose things, we're talking about a 150-year-old ring with enormous sentimental value on top of the actual monetary and historical value. That stuff is going in a fireproof safe. I don't know why anyone would even want to wear something like that regularly. I'd be living in constant fear of something happening to it. Not day Hall. Your cousin and her sister are. Make sure all rings are insured. Not day Hall. She already lost an expensive ring. I wouldn't trust her with a sentimental family heirloom ring. Put it away for a future daughter or granddaughter who doesn't inherit your girlfriend's butter fingers. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for leaving my brother's wedding reception early? My, 35 male, brother set his wedding date on Halloween, which was also my youngest son's fourth birthday. I was asked to be a groomsman, but I was transparent and told my brother and sister-in-law that I would accept but also, we probably wouldn't stay for the whole reception. My sons, four and seven, still wanted to dress up, go trick-or-treating, and have their neighborhood kid friends over for a small Halloween birthday party after. Weirdly, my brother and sister-in-law never really acknowledged that I said we'd be leaving early, and I said it more than once over the months after they set the date. They always just kind of skirted around the topic, so I said screw it. If it was a problem, they'd say something. My wife was nervous about this. She agreed we'd leave, but still felt guilty. I, however, did not. They planned their wedding on a holiday and on their nephew's birthday. They had to have expected this, and I was sure we wouldn't be the only ones with kids leaving early. Day off the wedding, my mom pulls me aside and asks, Are you sure you want to leave the reception early? I think Kate, sister-in-law, has a cake for son, and she's expecting that you guys won't leave. I told her, no, we're still leaving. 
We'll be there for the ceremony, all the pictures, and at the reception for about an hour or so, but we're still giving our son his day. If they got a cake for my son, this was never communicated with us, even though we said multiple times we weren't staying for the entire reception. They just assumed this would make us stay. So that's what we did. We left right after the cake cutting and, yeah, they had a small personal-sized cake for my son and everyone sang happy birthday to him before their cake cutting. It was very sweet and I was grateful. Recently, we visited for my mom's birthday and my brother and his wife didn't come by, but I figured it was because of them not being vaccinated. Apparently not. According to my parents and sister, they are upset about us leaving the reception early. Apparently, I was supposed to stay and help them clean up like all the groomsmen slash bridesmaids were. This was also never communicated with me. Also, my sister-in-law told my sister after the reception that my son's having to miss trick-or-treating one year shouldn't have been a big deal, and that we could have had a birthday party any other day. I haven't had a chance to talk to them, but I'm also not totally sorry. I'm sorry their feelings are hurt. That was not my goal but feel like I communicated and compromised pretty well and they never said that it was an issue. If it was, I would have backed out of being a groomsman, but I doubt I would have stayed for the entire reception. My kids come first, period. If their wedding was any other day, I would have stayed for the entire reception. I might be the a-hole because he's my only brother and I left what might be his only wedding early. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Ignoring someone is not a form of conflict resolution. If they had an issue with your plans to leave early, they could have and should have addressed it much sooner instead of buying a cake for your son without communicating at all. That's some passive-aggressive nonsense right there. If they can talk about it with Opie directly, and this is all second-hand gossip from others, I would ignore all the talk and carry on as if everything is normal. If they can't be honest with Opie and they prefer to talk behind their back, that says a lot about their character. If pressed by anyone, I'd reply I'm shocked that anyone would be upset with a four-year-old for celebrating his birthday and flip it back on them. Yeah, at four years old, it's possible this would be the first birthday where the son actually understands that his birthday is coming up and wants to pick what they do to celebrate it. Can you imagine telling a kid that age, no, we can't do the once-in-a-year event you want to do for your birthday. We have to go to uncle's adult party all night and help him clean up afterwards. Not today, Hull. 1. Halloween is a major holiday depending on where you are. 2. It's your son's birthday. Your brother knew this for some years. 3. You gave him a warning ahead of time that you wouldn't stay for the entire wedding to celebrate your boy and Halloween. I got married on Halloween a few years ago, but made it clear that if guests didn't want to come for any reason, we were fine with that. Honestly, the wedding only really matters to the people getting married, and these long events can be an imposition. Not day hall. It told them multiple times you were going to leave early. They chose to ignore this and then try to make you stay via mom and son's cake. It's sneaky and manipulative. The only people a wedding really matters to is the folks getting married. For everyone else, it's just another event they have to plan for. Sure, your sons could miss a Halloween, but why? Because the couple are selfish? Trick or treating is one of those things there's a hard cap on. After a certain age, it's gone. Last story is titled, Would I be the a-hole if I have my brother walk me down the aisle knowing it would hurt feelings? This is a conflict I had with my mom recently that I need to figure out where I'm placed in this. So I, 26 female, have an older brother, Sean, 33 male, and have brother Cody, 14 male. Mine and Sean's dad died when I was 8 and he was 15. Our mom remarried to Jack two years later. Sean never really cared much to have a relationship with Jack. He was civil when he still lived at home, but once he was gone, he didn't really choose to build a relationship with Jack. And he has always been okay with Cody, but definitely treats us very different. So I have a very close relationship with Sean. He was my favorite person as a kid, and when our dad died, I looked up to him so much more because he's so like our dad, from appearance to personality. With Cody, I do love him. But if I'm being honest, it is nowhere near the same as the bond I have with Sean. I treat them both like just my brothers though, and I try not to use half-brother around Cody. There is conflict between Sean and our mom and Jack. They don't understand why he wouldn't be happy another man came in and stepped up and loved everyone and want to treat him with the same love and respect he gave our dad. 
Jack and I get along okay, but I do not consider him my dad. And I do sometimes hate how he expects the same kind of love as I have always had for my dad. Andy did admit in family therapy in three separate occasions that he genuinely expected me to love him the same and see him as my new dad. My mom also expected more or less the same and admitted it. But she said she would be okay with just allowing him the same respect and role in my life. I got engaged a couple of weeks ago and my first instinct was to ask Sean to walk me down the aisle and to do a special dance with me to honor our dad. My mom jumped in before I said anything and asked me what I was planning and I told her. She told me that would hurt Jack and Cody's feelings. That a better option if I won't ask Jack would be to ask Cody, since he's also my brother, and would be a tie to Jack. I told her I wanted a tie to my dad and the brother I have that connection with. She told me that since Sean couldn't even treat Cody the same, it would be wrong to shun his dad and then have this elevated role for the brother who doesn't treat him the same as his sister. She told me I would be selfish and cruel if I asked someone who has been against family harmony and who treats family members, especially kids, like they are lesser members of the family. And while I still, deep in my heart, want Sean, I know she's right and it will hurt feelings, especially Cody's, because it does upset him that Sean doesn't make the same effort with him as it does me. So my question is, would I be the a-hole if I ask Sean, knowing that it will hurt feelings? The other option which I'm kind of considering is walking alone or with my fiancé, but he wanted to enter with his sister slash best woman. Not day hall. I would think an older brother walking a bride down the aisle is much more typical than having a younger teen brother walk you. A 14-year-old walking someone down the aisle is kind of weird. He's a bit too young to give away the bride, if this makes sense. I presume Opie wants to keep the tradition. It's not mandatory to do this, it's true, but everyone has their own choices. I would propose a compromise to involve the kids somehow, but not that. Maybe part of the entourage? Maybe an attendant? I could even see a teen being the ring bearer as well, somewhat like a mini groom with a responsibility. I guess Jack will already be a part of the ceremony as stepdad. Maybe the father-daughter dance can be with him? With a few compromises, as long as they're willing to do so, everyone can be happy somehow. Well, in reality, Opie shouldn't have to compromise with stuff like the father-daughter dance and such. Now, it would make some sense to make the younger brother a ring bearer or something. Not day hall. This is your wedding. Your wedding day, and you should be allowed to do what you want. Your mom and Jack can't accept the fact that neither you nor Sean has accepted Jack as a replacement dad. You don't treat him like your father because you don't see him as your father. You see Cody as a sibling, but not like you do Sean. You two have had a longer time together and a different bond than you do with Cody. It's the same for Sean. Sean has been there for you. If you want him to walk you down the aisle, you should ask him. Jack has to get over the fact that you're never going to see him as your father. Cody has learned that your relationship with him is different than the one with Sean, because you two have been together so much longer. Don't let someone use emotional manipulation to get you to do something for your wedding that you don't want to do. How do you think Sean will feel if Jack or Cody walks you down the aisle? I think you're going to have hurt feelings no matter what you choose to do. Do what you want for your wedding. Not day hall. Have Sean walk you down the aisle and suggest your mom and stepdad have a talk with their therapist. Their idea of family harmony is that their feelings are more important than anyone else's. Tell them they can watch Sean walk you down the aisle and enjoy the moment for the two of you and be happy. Or they can look at your photo album after.